Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of the Aero Precision Solus video series. So today I'm gonna to be going through and just getting some Virgin cases ready. Um, I have some 6.5 Creedmoor Alpha Munitions Brass, so I'm just gonna be mandrilling the case next and then um, chambering it a burying just to get a fire form load ready to go. And then we'll go out to the range and see the results from that. For the next videos from there on out, we'll be doing load development and uh, maybe even bring the rifle out to a match and video that to see how it does as well. Um, might lend it to a buddy so they can go shoot and get a video too. So yeah, got a lot of things stored and planned for this video series. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get these cases whipped up and we'll get to it. So for the first step, obviously I'm gonna get the cases all lubed up for the inside of the case neck in order to mandrel them. I just use a 99% or 99.9%, .9%, I think it is, isopropyl alcohol and lanolin. I'll leave some Amazon links if you're interested in just making this. It works really good. I really like it. it dries pretty quick as well, too. I've had just this bottle right here for, I don't know, um, I'd say about a year, maybe a little over, and it's still not even halfway gone yet and reloaded a lot with it. You really don't need much. It's just one spray usually or two, depending on how many cases you're getting and it gets it all coated pretty good. So um, if you're looking for a ratio, I usually do 10 to one, nine to one, 11 to one, you really can't mess it up. So um, works really good. So I'll get this brass lubed here. Alrighty, from here, I'm gonna go ahead and mandrel these cases. So one of the things I noticed when I did this, especially with like Lapua cases, um, case necks can be pretty hard when they're in the virgin state or unfired. So I usually just take an Ellie Wilson mandrel and just do it one thou underneath bullet diameter and just mandrel it and go ahead. And that kind of frees up the neck a little bit so it doesn't seat as hard as it normally would. And you get a ton of seating force, not that big of a deal, but it's just one of my pet peeves. So I just go ahead and mandrel them and then chamber and burr. And then you can go from there. Alrighty. Now that we got all of these mandrelled out, we're gonna go over to the chamfering to burn next. All right, now we're off to the last part. Right after chamfering and having some lube on the cases still, I do like to clean it off. I know we're not here to really talk about reloading too much today, but um, if you haven't seen the effects of what happens when you leave lubricant or you get water in your cases or things like that, um, you should check out our post. I'll leave it down in the description on um, the increased force from bolt load. It's pretty interesting if you guys are interested in that sort of stuff and looking for false signs of pressure. But um, anyway, I'm going to get these cleaned up and we'll get on to priming them, putting powder in them, loading bolts, and then head it out to the range. All right, we're finally off to the range. Some fire forming loads that we whipped up and now I'm trying to sight in the rifle. Here, I am going to try to use some of the uh, uh, little bits that I have with the fix it sticks, but unfortunately didn't have the right size to actually get the cheek piece off. So I got to kind of wing it here as you'll see. So I kind of just align it as best as I can at 50 yards and just make some small adjustments and everything worked out pretty good. But I was originally under the impression that I had to remove the cheek piece in order to seat down the barrel because I thought it was obstructing the view. But I did notice coming back home that I'll show at the very end of this video that I could see um, a little bit. I noticed right before I took out the, the bolt itself when trying to clean everything inside the barrel and took the cheek piece off, when I put it back, 
and still had the bolt out of it. I could barely see down the barrel. So um, I might try to highlight on that more uh, next video to see if you really have to take the cheek piece off in order to actually sight it. Because I could see a little bit down the barrel, but um, I'll take a video here at the uh, end of this specific video so you guys can see and kind of come up with your own conclusion yourself. So here goes the first 10 rounds down the barrel and you'll see the group size at the bottom right of the screen just did 10 shots. Um, so for a total of what I all shot here, I just did 30 rounds with uh, three 10 round groups. So I'll post the uh, group sizes below. Pretty, pretty happy with them, not gonna lie. Um, being the size that they are for something that's gonna be you know, more of an entry level PRS rifle for people interested in that sport and trying to get into it. Um, again, we're gonna see obviously how this does over time. Not gonna make any conclusions right off the bat, but so far I'm pretty impressed and uh, liking it. The bullets that I was shooting was a 140 match burner, um, a 140 grain Barnes match burner. So nothing expensive by any means is available. Did use Alpha Munitions brass, but again, I'm going to use that for once we work up a load. So just wanted to get it fire form and uh, did use N150. I'm going to change to N555 um, to see how that works. Showed some pretty promising numbers on Gordon's, but uh, so far, really happy with the groups. Um, getting 100% burn of the propellant with M150 and 55, or triple five rather, um, showed some pretty high uh, burn, but had some trouble with lower 30 degree weather. So um, it's going to be the complete opposite. 100, it's going to get 100% burn, help with dispersion and you know quote unquote temp stability um, factors with that as well too. So it has a really high case fill too. So we will see how it shoots, but for right now, I'm just gonna post up the groups and just keep on shooting. On to our second group now. I do want to say we have to take these group sizes with a grain of salt. With the first order of recoil effects, being that the rifle recoils first and the projectile exits second, there's a lot of human element into group shooting and testing rifles. To do my best, I did go out and cheat it a little bit by buying a bench rest rear bag to try to eliminate most shooter influence possible to kind of give a better idea. But again, take this with a grain of salt as groups obviously will get bigger and smaller as we shoot more which we can see that exact thing happening with my next 10 shot group, which wasn't very good on my part. And here's the final 10 round group that I messed up. No big deal, but regardless, after we get done shooting this, I'm going to transition over to the final closing thoughts and showing you the angle of where you might be able to see down the barrel with the cheek piece still installed for bore siding. As I'm making this video, I just checked last night when putting some wipeout in the barrel to clean it after this range session, so I haven't really checked it in great length if it's possible. So we're going to do it together and let you make up your own minds of what you can and can't see. Of course, I'll try to get the camera lens focused as possible, but it might be difficult. We'll find out.
All right, now going back to what we were talking about earlier, I believe the cheek piece had to be removed during the rain session in order to bore side it, but it looks like I was wrong. After taking out the bolt and putting some wipeout in, I was curious just to see how much you could actually see down from the back end without the cheek piece removed. To my surprise, you can see a fair bit with the cheek piece at the lowest position possible. However, it still has to be removed for a cleaning bore guide. With our next video, we'll be going through low development with the Solus, proper fire forming, ejector removing, and shooting some distance with the Solus and more. But most importantly, I want to say thank you again for watching this video series. If you guys have anything you want to see in particular, please leave a comment. I'm more than happy to show anything or do a test with the Solus that you would like to see. Regardless, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next video.